I welcome you all to this interesting quiz session on semiconductors. Here we are going to deal with the properties and classification of semiconductor materials which you would have already studied in your regular lecture class. I am Dr. Yunus Jerusha, an assistant professor of physics. The first question. How does a semiconductor behave at zero Kelvin? Your choice is? The correct answer is B. A semiconductor is a solid which has the energy band similar to that of an insulator at zero Kelvin. The next question. Semiconductor acts as an insulator in the presence of impurities. Is it true or false? The answer is B. When the temperature is raised or when an impurity is added, their conductivity increases. Since conductivity in semiconductors is inversely proportional to the temperature. The third question. How is the resistance of semiconductor classified? Your choice is? The correct answer is C. Semiconductors have a negative temperature coefficient. The reason being, when temperature is increased, large number of charge carriers are produced due to the breaking up of the covalent bonds and these electrons move freely giving rise to an increase in conductivity. Question 4. What are the charge carriers in semiconductors? The answer is A. Conductors have electrons as their charge carriers, whereas in semiconductors, electrons and holes take part in the conduction process. Question 5. Which of the following is known as an indirect band gap semiconductor? The answer is A. Elemental semiconductors are made up of a single element of the fourth column, such as germanium, where recombination takes place via traps and therefore they are called as indirect band gap semiconductors. Question 6. Which column elements are combined to make compound semiconductors? The choices are here. The correct answer is D. Compound semiconductors are made by combining the third and the fifth column elements. An example, gallium arsenide is made by combining third and fifth column elements. Question 7. Compound semiconductors are also known as direct band gap semiconductors. True or false? The answer is A. In compound semiconductors, recombination takes place directly and the energy difference is emitted in the form of photons in the visible or infrared range. Hence, compound semiconductors are known as direct band gap semiconductors. The next question, how are charge carriers produced in intrinsic semiconductors? The choice is, the answer is C, impure semiconductors in which charge carriers are produced due to impurity atoms are called as extrinsic semiconductors. They are obtained by doping an intrinsic semiconductor with impurity atoms. Question 9. What type of a material is obtained when an intrinsic semiconductor is doped with a pentavalent impurity? The choices are listed. The answer is A. N-type semiconductor is obtained by doping an intrinsic semiconductor with pentavalent impurity atoms. Question 10. 
What type of material is obtained when an intrinsic semiconductor is doped with trivalent impurity? The correct answer is D. P-type semiconductor is obtained by doping an intrinsic semiconductor with a trivalent impurity. Question 11. Which method can be used to distinguish between the two types of carriers? Answer is A. When a conductor carrying current is placed in a transverse magnetic field, an electric field is produced inside the conductor in a direction normal to both the current and the magnetic field. And this phenomenon is known as Hall effect which is used to distinguish between types of charge carriers. What is the Fermi energy of a n-type semiconductor? The choice is, the answer is C. The Fermi energy level of the n-type semiconductor lies exactly between the donor energy level ED and the lowest energy level of the conduction band EC and therefore the Fermi energy level of the n-type semiconductor is EF is equal to EC plus ED by 2. The next question, EF is equal to EC plus EV by 2 represents the Fermi energy level of which of the following? The answer is D. The Fermi energy of an intrinsic semiconductor is EF is equal to EC plus EV by 2 where EF lies exactly between the conduction and the valence bands. Question 14. For semiconductors, the resistivity is inversely proportional to the temperature for semiconducting materials. Is it true or false? The answer is A. Semiconductors have a negative temperature coefficient. When the temperature of the semiconductor is increased, Large number of charge carriers are produced due to the breaking of covalent bonds. These charge carriers move freely and the conductivity increases while the resistivity decreases. Question 15. What is the energy level below which all levels are completely occupied at 0 Kelvin called? The choice is? The correct answer is B. Fermi energy is said to be the energy of the highest possible occupied energy level at 0 Kelvin. Below this level, all the states are completely occupied and above which all the states are empty. Question 16. The concentration of doping is kept below what value? Choices. The answer is A. The concentration of doping in semiconductors is generally below 1%. However, it is enough to bring a huge drop in the energy. Question 17. In n-type semiconductors, which extra energy level is added? The answer is B. In n-type semiconductors, a new energy level called the donor energy level is added below the conduction band and the energy difference between these two energy levels is 0 0.05 EV. Question 18. Which of the following can be used to create a P-type semiconductor? The answer is C. For a P-type semiconductor, a material with three valence electrons is chosen. Gallium, being trivalent, can be used to create the P-type semiconductor. Question 19. Which of the following is not an intrinsic semiconductor? The answer is A. All the above four choices have four bonding electrons, but the energy required to remove an electron is maximum for carbon as the valence electrons are in the second orbit. Hence, the number of free electrons for conduction is negligibly small in carbon. 20th question. Which of the following is the n-type semiconductor? The answer is C. 
two six semiconductors are generally p type semiconductors except for zno and znt two six semiconductors are those which contain atoms of materials which have two valence electrons and six valence electrons respectively question 21 p type semiconductors have a lower electrical conductivity than n-type semiconductors. True or false? The answer is A. Holes are the majority charge carriers in P-type semiconductors. They have a lower mobility compared to that of electrons for the same level of doping. Hence, P-type semiconductors have a lower electrical conductivity than n-type semiconductors. Question 22. Identify the type of material shown in the energy band diagram. The choices are The correct answer is C. An acceptor energy level is found just above the valence band. This happens in the case of P-type semiconductors. Question 23. Holes are the majority carriers in intrinsic semiconductors. True or false? The answer is B. A pure semiconductor is called an intrinsic semiconductor. Hence, in this case, the number of electrons and holes are the same. As the electron that moves out of its position leaves a hole behind. Hence, the concentration of electrons and holes are the same in an intrinsic semiconductor. Question 24. A semiconductor is formed by what bonds? The choices are given here. The correct answer is A. All semiconductors form covalent bonds with the neighboring atoms to maintain the octet. Question 25. The random motion of holes and electrons due to thermal agitation is the choice is the correct answer is C. Diffusion. Electrons and holes move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration with an increase of temperature. Hope you liked this quiz session which would have made you recollect most of the concepts you've studied back in class and I guess you would have answered most of the questions posted here. If you would have liked this video, I encourage you to subscribe for this particular channel. Thank you.